Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Dick Haynes, Gene Crane, and Vivian Blaine in State Fair. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. With a war over, a great institution has returned to the American scene. One that typifies America intimately and colorfully, the State Fair. Here is our love of sport and competition, our pride in industry, our easygoing friendliness set forth extravagantly in a field of tents and banners, music and excitement, warmth and laughter. Such is the atmosphere of our Lux Radio Theater play tonight from 20th Century Fox's hit, State Fair. And our stars are Dick Haynes, singing the unforgettable melodies of Richard Rogers and Oscar Hammerstein, Gene Crane, also from the talented screencast, and Vivian Blaine, of the lovely voice and equally appealing beauty. One of the cast in the picture I'm shooting told me of visiting the well-known fair at Danbury, Connecticut, and stopping at one of the game concessions there. The prizes included many of those familiar articles, dolls, watches, cameras, plus more practical luxuries like canned fruit, preserves, and, uh, yes, you've guessed it, Lux Flakes. Well, I imagine that in many rural fairs where competition is the watchword and good judgment a deciding factor, Lux Flakes are a tempting prize. And I imagine, too, that Lux Flakes help to care for many of those precious samplers, shawls, and colorful knit goods that are a woman's contribution to all country fairs. We're bound for the state of Iowa and our first act, starring Dick Haynes as Wayne, Jean Crane as Margie, and Vivian Blaine as Emily, with Elliot Lewis as Pat. <laughs> It's an August afternoon on the Frake Farm in Iowa. And outside his barn, Mr. Abel Frake is gazing with grave concern at the huge bulk of a gentleman named Blue Boy. Blue Boy is a pig. Come on, Blue Boy. Get up on your feet, son. You're not sick, are you? And that pig is taking the state fair. That pig expects going to win first prize. Now look here, Simon. I thank you for bringing his feet out from town. But I'll also thank you to keep your opinions to yourself. That there's the finest Hampshire boar that ever breathed. That's what the judges will say, too. Catch pneumonia, probably. Hard cholera, maybe. He ain't sick. He's just resting. Don't know what folks get so excited for about State Fair, anyway. Crapesing all over Iowa in an automobile trailer. We've got to have a place to live when we get to the fair, don't we? You mean the missus is going to? So's my daughter, Margie. So's my son, Wayne. Oh, hey, he see that, Ebo. What if you get in an accident on the way? What if your farm burns down while you're gone? And sleeping in that drafty trailer, you'll come back sick, all of you. Simon, I'll make a little bet with you. I'll bet that Blue Boy will win the grand award and that nothing bad will happen to me or my family. I'll bet we'll all have a wonderful time and be better off for going. Mm, foolish bet, Abel. Uh, five dollars? Five dollars. I'll be around for the money the day you get back. <laughs> we'll show him, won't we, Blue Boy? Here, Blue Boy... What's wrong, son? Tell me what's wrong. Indisposed pig, if you ask me. Indisposed. Margie, where are you, dear? In the swing, Mother. What you doing? Swing. I had a vague idea you might be. All packed? Not quite. Did you want me for something? I'm putting the mince meat in the crack. Want to watch me? I think I'll just sit, Mother. Don't know what's got into you lately. All you do is mope. But don't mope. Always saying she doesn't know what's got into me. I'll be so glad to get to the fair, see something different for a change. Oh, what has got into me anyway? I'm as restless as a willow in the windstorm. 
I'm as jumpy as a pup on a string. I'd say that I had spring fever, but I know it isn't spring. I'm sorry I am vaguely discontented, like a nightingale without a song to sing. Oh, why should I have spring fever? When it is and is in spring, I keep wishing I were somewhere else, walking down a strange new street, hearing words that I had never heard from a man of yet. I'm as giddy as a baby on a swing. I haven't seen a cloak or a rosebud or a robin on the wing. But I feel so gay in a melancholy way that it might as well. Mom, gee, help me with the pickles, will you, dear? Pickles. I'll be right there, Mother. I don't know why I bother putting up pickles. Never won a prize at the state fair, and I never will. If Mrs. Metcalf's pickles beat your pickles again this year, then those judges are simply crazy. Oh, sorry, pneumonia. He left out earthquakes, the old bloom sweater. Poor Dad. He's been talking to Simon. Come in, Dad. Uh, what you doing? Getting the pickles ready in the mincemeat. Here, let me taste that mincemeat. Abel, no. Not with your fingers. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't taste like Grandma Stidges used to. Telephone. I'll get it. You left something out of this mincemeat, Ma. I know I did. I left out the brandy. It's right here in the cupboard. I'll get it. You'll do nothing of the sort. I refuse to put liquor into my cooking. But, Ma, ain't no such thing as good mincemeat without good brandy. Those judges at the fair, they like a little snifty now and then, too. Was the phone for me, dear? It's Eleanor. For what? Your brother's out in the barn. I'll find him. Ain't uh, you going to say hello to Eleanor, Ma? Now, go on. See how our mother's feeling. Yes, I suppose I should. Keep stirring the mincemeat, Abel. Oh, sure, Ma, sure. Fine little woman. But she still don't know what a cup of brandy means to a crock of mincemeat. My duty to help her. <laughs> uh, I guess that's about a cup. Mm, I don't know. Better put in a mite more and be sure. There we are. <laughs> uh, oh, Ma, find out if she's going to the fair with us, Ma. Well, all I need now is a box for the pickles. I know just what you want, Ma. Oh, uh, be sure to put the top of the crock on good and tight. Don't worry. I just don't want the flavor to escape, that's all. I wonder. I just wonder. Oh, but putting brandy in food is definitely against my... Well, she does. Mrs. Metcalf does. Maybe she's a better cook than you are, Melissa Frake. Well, we'll just see about that. I'll do it. I'll just close my eyes and... Put it in. Oh, oh dear. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Oh, I do hope the judges like it. Well, Dad, at this rate, we'll be at the fairgrounds in an hour. Say, how's Blue Boy doing back there in his portable pullman? Doing fine, son. Oh, he's feeling lots better now. Try not to be too disappointed, Wayne. Disappointed? About Eleanor not being able to come. Oh, well, just one of those things, I guess. Say, Marge, how come Harry isn't going to the fair either? What? Go to the fair and neglect his farm? Not Harry Peterson. Now, Margie, Harry's a fine young man. Oh, sure. You saw him this afternoon. Uh, come to anything definite, dear? Oh, I don't know. 
Well, I'm sure I don't know what you're waiting for. Serve you right if he up and married that Skidmore girl. Well, right now, I hope he does. Woman talk, woman talk. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm going to do, Pop, since we get to the fair? You're going to help me fix up quarters at the trailer camp. Well, after we do that. I'm going to go to the Midway, and I'm going to look up that character who made such a sucker out of me last year. Uh, which one, son? You know, the one who runs the hoopla stand. You know, three hoops for a dime, prizes up to $20. I'm going to hoop him out of business. Yeah, uh-huh. I've been practicing. I can throw those hoops now with my eyes shut. <laughs> he made an awful fool out of me last year with his phony prizes. Something tells me he's going to get what's been coming to him. Three hoops for a dime and prizes up to $20. Well, what's the matter? Ain't nobody here got the pioneer spirit. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put down three nice, new, crisp $1 bills. Now, who'll spend the dime for three chances at $3? Here's my dime, mister. Remember me? I was here last year. You were? Won some mighty fine prizes, too, I'll bet. I want a pearl-handled revolver. Well, now, you see? Tell you what I'm going to do, folks. I'm going to give Daniel Boone here three hoops for nothing just to start things off. I can't win. I can only lose. But I love the game. Here you are, sonny. Show the folks how it's done. Thanks. I think I will. But the ringer, he shot a ringer. Ha, ha. So he did. Well, there goes one of my dollar bills. Here goes another, mister. Well, I just lost two dollars, folks, but I'm having fun. I'm having fun. Well, well, three ringers. Here's your three dollars, young fella. All right, now, who's next? I'll try again. Here's my dime. What are your money, man? You got three bucks cash? Beat it. I said I want to try again. And I said beat it. Okay, on one condition. Get out some of those prizes. Show them to the people here. Now, listen, kid, you know what I'm paying for this pitch? You won't show the prizes because they're fakes. Vanity cases that won't open. Clocks that haven't even got any works. Scram, buddy, scram. I'll call a cop. Yes. Why don't you call a cop? What's that, lady? I said, why don't you call a cop? Oh, a smart dame, huh? I don't know who you are, but... I'll Scarlett... tell you who I am. My father's the chief of police here. Oh, I... I don't want to cause any trouble, miss. Say, how did you get so good at this game? Been practicing? That's right. You see, last year I spent eight dollars trying to win one of those pearl-handled revolvers. When I finally won it, it wasn't a revolver at all. It was just a toy. Oh, defrauding the public. Now, eh? look, lady, just a minute. Will you give him back his eight dollars if he promises to leave? Eight dollars? Look, lady, do you think I'm made of money? Okay, eight bucks here. You think I should take it? I certainly do. Okay. That just about makes us even, mister. Well, so long, Daniel. I don't leave, folks. It's a fascinating game of skill. We're having fun tonight, folks. Lots of fun. Step right up and see what you can Well, now that you've helped me get my money back, how about helping me spend it? Thanks, but I can't. How about a hot dog? No reason. Frozen really. custard? I have an appointment. I'm late already. Oh, won't I see you again? How about tonight? Will you be on the midway? Yes, I think so. I'll sure be looking for you. Do that. Goodbye. Bye. Boy, is she nice. Is she? Oh. Hello, Marge. Dad's been looking for you. He wants you to help him take Blue Boy over to the swine pavilion. Want to come along? No, thanks. What have you got to do that's better? Oh, I don't know. I'll just take a walk around. Try out the roller coaster, maybe. Don't worry about me. The roller coaster, the longest, highest, fastest ride on the fairgrounds. It's a thrill a minute. It's the roller coaster. Get your ticket. Oh, miss. Uh, uh, are you speaking to me? Yeah, how do you feel? Oh, I feel fine, thank you. You didn't two minutes ago. Oh, didn't I? I was on that roller coaster, too. I was watching him. Did you ever ride on one of those things before? Well, of course I... Well... Not since I was seven years old. Want to try it again? No, thanks. I've had enough. Uh, hey. Yes? Wait a minute. Well? Your hair. Every step you take, your hair bounces up and down on the back of your neck. Nice. Well, everybody's hair bounces when they walk. Mine doesn't. I mean, girl. Well, bye. Oh, no, please. No, really. What are you afraid of? I'm not afraid of anything. Good. And what's wrong about the two of us sitting down over there and exchanging our ideas of life over a 7-Up? Oh, nothing wrong. I'm it's not just... saying it's a great idea. I'm just asking what's bad about it. Let's give it about five minutes. What do you say? I think five minutes would... would be fine.
When I left Chicago, I went to Des Moines. Been there ever since. Well, I certainly didn't pick you out for a newspaper man. Yeah, the great Des Moines Herald's got me hog tied. Someday they'll all work in a big paper, my own column. But, but what's a newspaper man doing at the fair? Oh, human interest story. Say, isn't that the trailer camp over there where you live? Oh, uh, I think I'd better go the rest of the way alone. I'd have a pretty hard time explaining you to my folks. Everybody has a hard time explaining me. I see you again, Margie? Well, Please, I... Bobby Locks. What about tonight? Well, I, I don't know. I don't know where I'll be tonight. I'll find you. How? Oh. I'm a newspaper man. It's my job finding the right people at the right time. And you're the right people. So long, Bobby Locke. Bobby Locke. You'd think I was a child. But he's nice. He's awfully nice. Why, why, he's about the nicest man I ever met. Stop gawking, Margie. People will think you've never been to a fair. Oh, I just thought I uh, might be somebody I know, maybe. So what? Now you are doing it. Who are you trying to find? Oh, I... Well, oh, I sort of had a half date with someone I met here last year. Well, uh, uh, why don't you keep your date, Wayne? What about you? Oh, I wouldn't mind. I really wanted to go to bed early tonight. Oh, you did? Yeah, you, you do look tired. Yes. Well, uh, have a good time, Wayne. Thanks, sis. Get a good night's sleep. Oh, I will. Bye. Well, good evening, Miss Frake. Oh, good evening, Mr. Adams. Fancy meeting you here. What a coincidence. Would you care for a ride on the roller coaster, or are you too tired? You heard what I said to my brother? Oh, certainly. You must think I'm wonderful. Wonderful. You see, we disagree already. Oh, and I'm sure we can straighten things out. Shall we try? I think that's the least I could do, Mr. Adams. Well, in that event, Miss Frake, let's go. Oh, pardon me, officer. I'm looking for the chief of police's daughter. You wouldn't happen to know where I could find her, would you? Well, if I wouldn't know, I don't know who would. I happen to be the chief of police. Oh. Oh! Now, what about my daughter? Well, we sort of had a date to... You did? What time is it? Almost 8 o'clock. Well, if you want to go home, you'll probably find my daughter getting her 8 o'clock bottle. I just have one daughter, mister, and she's nine months old. Oh, well, that's awful. It is? Why? Well, I, I mean, well, somebody's made a mistake. <laughs> sure looks like it was you, young feller. Well, well, thanks. Thanks a lot. Dancing tonight, folks. Tommy Thomas and his orchestra come in and dance everybody. The sweetest music in the state of... How many, mister? How many tickets? Tickets? Oh, oh, one. One ticket, please. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And now for your favorite, the lovely Emily Edwards singing, That's For Me. I saw you standing in the sun And you were something to see I know what I like and I like what I saw I said to myself, that's for me a lovely morning i remarked and you were quick to agree you wanted to walk and i nodded my head as i breathlessly said that's for me i left you standing under stars the day's adventures are through there's nothing for me but the dream in my heart And the dream in my heart That's for you Oh, my darling That's for you Well, hello, Miss Edwards. Hello. 
I enjoyed your song. Why, thank you. I, uh, just spoke to your father. My who? Your father, the chief of police. <laughs> oh, that. Didn't you know I was kidding? Well, I do now. But just for that, you're going to have to have a drink with me. Gee, when I saw you just now, I couldn't believe you were the same girl. Oh, was I that bad? Oh, no, you were wonderful. That's just it. Emily Edwards will... Well, I just can't figure out why a girl like you'd have gone to all that trouble just for me. Well, what's wrong with you? Oh, nothing wrong with me. I mean, well, maybe there is, but don't tell me. Do you, uh, like to dance? Uh-huh. Do you? Sure. That's why I brought it up. Sure. Well, this is just wonderful, Miss Edwards. What are you thinking about? If you really want to know... About you practicing throwing those little wooden hoops just to get even with somebody. I'm kind of screwy, huh? As a matter of fact, I like the kind of fellow who do that. Well, that's just fine, fine, because I like the kind of girl who likes that kind of fellow. Gee, it's turned out to be a grand night after all. Yes, yes, it has. A grand night. It's a grand night for singing the moon. Is flying high, and somewhere a bird who is bound he'll be heard is throwing his heart at the sky. It's a grand night for singing. The stars are bright above. The earth is aglow, and to add to the show, I think I am falling in love. Falling. more than the moon Maybe it's more than the bird Maybe it's more than the sight of the night and the light too lovely for words Maybe it's more than the earth Shiny and silvery blue Maybe the reason I'm feeling this way has something to do with you. It's a grand night for singing. The stars are bright above. The earth is aglow, and to add to the show, I think I am falling in love. You're not so bad in the vocal department yourself. Oh, I'm an old glee club boy. Oh. <laughs> it just dawns on me. I work here. I've got to get back to the bandstand. Well, would you mind if I sort of, well, kind of hung around? No. No, I wouldn't mind. I think that would be fine. You're standing in the sun and you were something to see. I know what I like and I liked what I saw and I said to myself, that's that for me. Hey. A lovely morning, I remarked, and you were quick to agree. Margie. Oh, hello, Wayne. Say, are you just getting home? Yes. Well, I thought you said you were so tired. Oh, I was, but I'm not anymore. Oh, I see. Maybe you met somebody you knew after all, huh? His name's Pat. He's wonderful. He's... And, uh, I suppose you met that fellow you had a half date with. Huh? Oh, oh, yes, I did. I saw you dancing with him. He has the prettiest blonde hair. <laughs> she sure has. What? Oh, it's a wonderful thing. Isn't it, Wayne? Act two of State Fair, starring Dick Hames as Wayne, Jean Crane as Margie, and Vivian Blaine as Emily, with Elliot Lewis as Pat. It's early morning at the State Fair. 
and in the trailer camp, the Flake family has just sat down to breakfast. Well, I must say, you two seem very happy this morning. You must have had a wonderful time last night. You sure did. Ooh, terrific. I wish your father was enjoying himself. Where is Dad? Saying good morning to Blue Boy, of course. He was up with that pig half the night. Thinks he's sick. Sick nothing. He's raring to go. Oh, well, thank goodness. Yeah, you'd think he owned the place. He's strutting around proud on the peacock, thanks to Esmeralda. Who is Esmeralda? She's a lady pig, that's who. Esmeralda is Eben Stander's sow. Eben just moved Esmeralda's pen right next to Blue Boy's and did Blue Boy perk up. <laughs> that's all he needed, a little feminine companionship. <laughs> well, I think he's got something there. Well, that's fine. Now hurry up. Margie and I have to get over to Pickles and Mincemeat. See, that's right. They're making the awards this morning, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Well, don't be too optimistic, Ma. You just can't make good mincemeat without good brandy. Now, you hush up, Abel Freight. You worry about your pig, and I'll worry about my mincemeat. Eat your breakfast. As you know, ladies and gentlemen, our judges are Mr. Heavenstall, Mr. Fingerling, and Mrs. Eager. They are now sampling the entries at three pickles. Oh, Margie. Why, they're hardly tasting them. Oh, dear. And I like my sweet pickles best of all. Oh, they don't have to taste much. Don't be so jittery, Mother. Oh, look. There's that Mrs. Metcalf from Pottsville. Mrs. Biggity. Why, she was just lucky last year. Her pickles weren't half as good as yours. The judges are a sour pickle. It's sour pickles, ladies and gentlemen. Margie, the judges are looking at Mrs. Metcalf. I don't blame them. She's the biggest sour pickle here. Oh, this... Last year, I'm going to enter anything. It just isn't worth the strain. The judges have reached their decision in pickles, ladies and gentlemen. They are now walking to mincemeat. Oh, aren't they going to announce their decision? There's no decision until after they finish with mincemeat. They do that purposely to torture us. There's no question about the mincemeat award, Mr. Fingerling. It's this clock here. Oh, decidedly, Mrs. Eager. Well, Mr. Heppenstall. <laughs> Don't bother me. I'm still sampling. Oh, delicious. Well, then, we're all agreed. Now, who's chairman of this committee? I'm still testing. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, superb. Now, now, just one more spoonful Mr. and... Mr. Uh, oh, all right, all right. Can't have any fun around here. Silence, silence, please, ladies and gentlemen. We are now ready to announce the award. Sweet pickles. First prize, Mrs. Edward Metcalf of Pottsville. Second prize, Mrs. Agnes Field of Arcadia. Sour pickles. First prize... Mrs. Melissa Frake of Brunswick. Second prize, Mrs. Metcalf. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, on very rare occasions, we give a plaque for really distinguished achievement. We have voted unanimously that it be given now to a lady who has concocted the most delicious, the most succulent, <laughs> the spiciest mint meat ever entered in this state fair. Mrs. Melissa Frake of Brunswick. <laughs> Margie, oh, Margie. Oh, I've got the most one get out of life, Margie. If I think any more about it, I'll, I'll cry. But, Mother, wish you to stay. They wanted you to make a speech. Oh, I can't help it, dear. I'm just too excited to think. Then we are, ladies. We'd like a picture, if you don't mind. Oh, oh. Mrs. Frake. That's it. Thank, Thank you me. very much. Your picture will appear in tomorrow morning's Herald. Oh, see, Mother, you're famous. Oh, dear, I'm worn out. I'm going up the trailer and lie down. You run along and enjoy yourself. Be sure to tell Dad, Ma. And Wayne, I'm proud of you, darling. Oh, thank you. I was talking to my mother. Oh. Why didn't you want to meet her, Pat? She was too excited, Margie. Wouldn't be fair to her to meet a character like me. She'd like anybody this morning. Pat, why do you keep running yourself down? My goodness, The boss was think... here this morning, Marge, to see me. Oh? He's thinking of giving me a chance at that job in Chicago, that newspaper I was telling you about. Oh, Pat, that's wonderful. I thought you were going to say you'd been fired or something. Funny, isn't it? Now I don't care whether I get the job or not. But why? I don't know why. 
All I know is that I've got the whole day free. Do you think you could stand me for a whole day? There's nothing like finding out, is there? Let's find out, Pat. Emily, do you have to stay here in the dance pavilion? It's only 9 o'clock, Wayne. My evening's work has just begun. Is your sister here again tonight? Margie? Oh, she's in the clouds, Emily. You see, she's met a fella. Matter of fact, brought him home for dinner tonight. Things certainly happen fast at a state fair. They do, don't they? Hmm? Oh, nothing. Now, look, it can't be much fun for you just hanging around here waiting to catch me between songs. Well, I can't think of a thing I'd rather do. Anyway, we can, I mean, can we go someplace afterwards? Oh, I can't tonight, Wayne. It's Marty's birthday. Who's Marty? The boy I sing with in the band. We're giving him a party at the hotel. Like to come? Well, I was kind of hoping to be alone with you. Oh, I'd like that better, too. But I can't very well back out now. Hey, Emily, we got a number coming up. Right away, Marty. Don't go away, Wayne. I'll be back in a minute. Anything you say, Emily. Always. Hey, Buddy, you got a minute, Buddy? I guess so. Why? You're a friend of Emily Edwards, huh? I saw you talking to her before. Matter of fact, I'm waiting for her now. I'm taking her to her hotel. Well, say, that's great. <laughs> I think so, but why do you? My name's McGee, see? I work for some music publishers, see? And here, right in my pocket, is the greatest song I ever plugged. Oh, you don't want to talk to me. I want to get to Emily, but every time I get nearer, that Marty Simmons throws me out. You in the music business? I'm a farmer. A farmer. What a night I'm having. This here song's terrific, see? But it's going to die a terrible death if people don't get to hear it. And the way to do that is to get the big singers to sing it first, like Emily. Oh, but I can't go in and just... No. No, I didn't think you could. But here, just read these words. What beautiful lyrics. What scintillating stuff. Look, look. Give me a couple of copies and I'll see what I can do. Oh, say, that's great. And you'll find I'm not at all niggardly when it comes to the old payola. Payola? Getting Emily to sing this song might be worth 50 bucks to me. Keep your money, mister. If the song's half as good as you say it is, she'll probably be glad to sing it. Night for singing, the stars are bright above. The earth is a glow and to back to the show. I think I am falling in love, falling, falling in love. Hey, hey, what kind of a birthday party is this? Where's my drink, Emily? Coming, Marty. Put a piece of ice in this, will you, Wayne? Sure. Gee, Emily, I didn't know there'd be so many people here. You're lucky. I want them all to hear you sing. Oh, now, wait a minute. I'm not a... Nobody could be. Oh, Marty. Nobody could be what? Nobody could be as good a singer as you've been saying he is. You'd be surprised. Come on over to the piano, way. Oh, now, don't tell me we have to coax you. You know, you can't tell, but you might have something we can use with the band. Well, as a matter of fact, if you do need a new song, I've got one right here that I like very much. Oh, how do you like that? Hey, everybody, he didn't expect to sing, but he brought his music with him. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Pipe down, everybody. We're going to hear some real talent. Uh, would you like to try it with me, Emily? I'd love to. All right, it's your song. Do it yourself. Did you write it, too? No, I didn't. A fellow gave it to me. Well, this is really going to be something. Here you are, Al. Play the piano for the man. Well, I'll try to. What do you say, Mac? Whenever you're ready. <laughs> Maybe you'll never be the love of my life Maybe I'm not the boy of your dreams But isn't it kind of fun to look in each other's eyes Swapping romantic dreams Maybe you're not a girl to have and to hold Maybe I'm not a boy who would stay But isn't it kind of fun carousing around the town Dancing the night away isn't it kind of fun holding hands according to a sweet and corny custom? Isn't it kind of fun making vows, admitting that we both intend to bust them? Maybe we're out for lots, a girl and a boy, hidden across the table for two. But haven't you got a hunch that this is a real McCoy and all the things we tell each other are true? I'm not a girl for a sentimental tripe. 
I never go for the Romeo type. Over a dewy-eyed Juliet, no one has seen me to rule yet. I don't say our hearts are tied by love's eternal tether. But using words less dignified, isn't it kind of fun to be together? Maybe you'll never be the love of my life. Maybe I'm not the girl of your dreams. But haven't you got a hunch that this is a real McCoy and, and all, all the things, things we tell each other are true? You know, you're right about this song, Wayne. I like it, too. Hey, wait a minute. Let me see that music. Billings Publishing Company, huh? Did the guy named McGee give you this? That's right. Uh Uh-huh, and how much did he slip you for plugging it in here tonight? Now, wait a minute, Marty. He didn't slip me anything. He didn't promise to come through with that old payola? Well, he did use that expression. I'll just bet he did. Well, that's great, Emily. Your boyfriend here is cashing in on you. I'm I'm sorry, Emily. I I couldn't help it. He's been putting in digs ever since I got here. See you later. Wayne. Wayne, wait a minute. Please don't go. Wayne! Look over there, Pat. The lights of the fair are going out. Fine thing, huh? You come from the country to see the fair, and I take you out of the fair to see the country. It was much better than the roller coaster. Was it? Margie, when you get back to Brunswick, are you really going to marry that guy you're sort of engaged to? That's what girls usually do, isn't it? Marry the men they're engaged to? Yeah, I guess they do. Think you'll ever marry? Me? Sure, sometime. Only trouble is, if I ever found a girl that I cared that much about, I'd care too much about her to wish a guy like me off on her. Sounds kind of hopeless. I guess it is. Anyway, it's pretty hard for me to picture myself, what do you call it, popping the question? Now, can you imagine me suddenly turning to some girl and blurting out, will you marry me? No, I see you wouldn't. Well, Bobby Locks, you've made a very wise decision. Anyway, I'd be no good for you. No good at all. Pat. Well, tomorrow's the big day for your father, isn't it? The day they judge the hogs. That's right. Well, I... I guess I'd better be going. Wayne's probably home already. You want me to walk you to your trailer? No. It, it's better if you don't. Will I see you tomorrow night? In front of the roller coaster? 8.30. Well, I... Margie, I just had to kiss you, Margie. Oh, Pat, I wondered all night if you were ever going to. I wondered, too, but I did, didn't I? Good night, honey. Good night. Pat! Yes? I was only talking before. I couldn't marry anybody but you, ever. Dick Haynes, Jean Crane, and Vivian Blaine will return after our final curtain for a brief chat. Here they are in the third act of State Fair. Dick in the role of Wayne Drake, Jean as his sister Margie, and Vivian as Emily. Well, it's been a wonderful day for the Drake family. For now, proudly reposing next to Ma's mincemeat black is a huge silver cup proclaiming Blue Boy the grand champion of the state fair. It's after supper. In the trailer, Abel reads the newspaper account of his hog's triumph. Now listen to this, Ma. As Mr. Abel Frake won the grand award, he was watched by his charming wife, and talented and beautiful daughter, Marguerite. Oh, my, my. Whoever wrote that must be a good friend to the Frake family. Pat wrote it, and he is a very good friend. 
Come on, Wayne. It's getting late. Just a minute. Hey, you look mighty pretty tonight. New dress? Uh-huh. Do you like it? Prettiest girl I ever saw. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm ready. Not too late now. We want to get an early start in the morning. Well, it might be a little late. It's the last night, you know. Good night, Mother. Good night. night. Good night. Ah, uh, you know, Abel, we have two lovely children. Well, who said we didn't? I wish Marge would make up her mind about Harry. Why? He won't run away. He's one of those goody, goody boys. Well, you were a good boy, too, once. Huh? Yeah, that's what you thought. Oh. Well, since you're such a gay dog, you're going to take me to the midway tonight. Oh, now, Ma, you're all tired out. Well, who said so? Well, would you look at this? Here in the newspaper. Mm, what? About that judge, the fellow who gave you the plaque. Says he had a kind of a seizure afterwards. Delirium treatment, sort of. Hey, while Mr. Heppenstall was unconscious, he kept murmuring something about mincemeat. Those nearby declared they could distinctly smell brandy on his lips. Where does it say that? Why, Melissa Frake, putting brandy in your mincemeat. I said, where does it say that? Where? In your conscience, woman. <gasps> oh, now just for that, you're not only taking me to the midway, we're going dancing, too. Besides, it was just a cup full. <laughs> If you only knew, Melissa. If you only knew. <laughs> Hello. That you, Pat? This is Simpson. Oh, yes, Mr. Simpson. Well, the job's yours. Get out of that hotel, grab a plane, and see Appleby tomorrow in Chicago. You mean I, I got a newspaper column? My own column? That's right. Provided you're in Chicago tomorrow. Oh, but I can't leave now. I've got a girl waiting for me at the fair. What'll I do? Get another girl in Chicago. Oh, but but this is different, Mr. Simpson. This isn't just a girl. And I suppose this new job is just a job. Now, look, mister, if you're not in Chicago in the morning, it's no column and no job. Oh, I understand, Mr. Simpson. I'll make up my mind right away and wire you. Hey, buddy. It's me, McGee. Hello, Mr. McGee. Going in to see Emily, huh? Mm-hmm. Say, that song you plugged for me, well, well, it's all set with Tommy Thomas for Emily to sing it in Chicago tomorrow night. Chicago? That's their next day. They're leaving tonight. Well, Emily didn't say she was... Well, I didn't figure on them leaving tonight. Right after the fair closes. Oh, I wish she'd hurry up and come out here. She said she'd meet me. I... I want to talk to her. Kind of went overboard for each other, didn't she, kid? Kind of. You're going back to the farm soon? Tomorrow. That'll be good. Well, thanks again. Hello. Hello. Is this the hotel? Whom did you want, please? Mr. Adams, please. Pat Adams. I'm sorry, miss. Mr. Adams checked out a half an hour ago. He left a forwarding address in Chicago. Chicago? If you'd like, I'll... uh... No. No, no, thank you. He's gone. Of course he's gone. I'm such a fool. Such a fool. There's a bench here in back of the dance provision room. Don't you want to sit down? Oh, I don't know what I want. Oh, I just can't think, Emily. What you're trying to say is that you've... Just been kidding me, huh? No way. I haven't been kidding. But I thought that... Oh. What's the difference what I thought? You see, I thought that you understood that, well, after all, we were just two people who met at a fair. And fell in love, didn't we? I didn't mean to, Wayne. I didn't. Would you believe something? It's every bit as hard for me to give you up as it is for you. Well, then why do it? Why don't you come with me tonight, meet my folks, go home with us tomorrow? Because I can't, Wayne. I... Hey, Emily, you ready? No, she isn't. I'll be right in, Marty. Wait here, Wayne. I have to tell you something. Something I, I should have told you before. If I hadn't been such a coward. Please wait, Wayne. Please. I heard what she said, kid. Don't miss much, do you, McGee? You mind if I say something? Such as what? Well, I'll give it to you straight, kid. Emily's married. She's got a husband, see? No, I don't see. They split up about a year ago. She liked him, though, see? 
sort of knocked her out for a while. You're the first guy she's looked at since then. Uh, I, I guess I just don't understand the people in your business. Well, they're the same as anybody else. They make mistakes, sure. But don't everybody? Why didn't she tell me? She was trying to tell you just now. Maybe she figured she had a right to a little happiness, too. You know what you and me need right now? A drink. How about it? I think you've got an idea there, McGee. I sure need something. Take it easy, Blue Boy. We'll be back home at the farm in a couple of hours. Blue Boy's just tired out. So am I. I can't remember when I've been as tired. That's that resting you did at the fair, Ma. Three days rest will tire anybody out. Hi, <laughs> Margie. For goodness sakes, what are you crying about? Oh, you'd think there'd never be another fair ever. Why, we'll be back next year. I never want to see another fair. Well, you can say that again. You meet a lot of people who play you for a sucker, and when the fair's over, then what? Oh, well, just chalk it up to experience, I guess. Yeah, sure, experience. Something new, different. Yes, sir, the freaks are coming home in grand style. Ma's got a plex, Blue Boy and I won the grand award, and we're all well and happy. Oh, sure. <laughs> and Simon Miller owes me five bucks. Boy, I can't wait to collect it either. Come on, son, step on it. Well, well, come up on the porch, Simon. Come right up. Heard out, sounds a hearty boy. Yeah, where's your money, then? We won the prizes. Nobody got sick, and nothing bad happened to any of us. Only thing is, something might have happened we don't know about. Oh, howdy, Mrs. Frakes. Howdy, my James. Hello, Simon. Hello, Mr. Miller. Come across now. Five dollars. Howdy, Wayne. Hello, Mr. Miller. I'll see you all later, Ma. I won't be home for dinner. Where to, son? Oh, I don't know. See Eleanor, I guess. You know, it just dawned on me how much I want to see her. Did Wayne have a good time at the fair? Looks a little down. Had the time of his life, as far as I can make out. Uh, your headache better, Margie? Headache, huh? Something you ate at the fair, Margie? You have a good time, ma'am? Answer that, Margie. Uh, Margie. Yes, Dad. It's probably Harry, dear, for you. Well, Simon, I want five dollars. Let's not be hasty about this now. Well, go on, dear. Don't let it ring all day. I'm going, Mother. Hello, Harry. Harry? Hey, doesn't anybody answer the phone at your house? Pat. Oh, Pat, where are you? In Brunswick. Margie, tell me quick, do you love me? Oh, yes. Yes, I do, Pat, I do. Well, that's all I want to know, because you're going back to Chicago with me. You're going to be the wife of a columnist. Hey, how do I drive out to your place? How? Well, where's your car pointed now? Toward the Elks Hall or the Grange Hall? South. It's pointed south. Then get in and keep it going in that direction. Just keep it going until you see me. And hurry, Pat. Hurry, darling. Oh, hurry. Mother! Mother! Uh, Margie, you didn't answer the question. Did you have a good time at the fair? Well, what if she didn't? That's no reason to... Oh, you... yes, Mr. Miller, yes. It was the most wonderful fair in the whole world. <laughs> there you are, gloomy gush, you see. Margie, where are you going? Abel, she's driving off in Simon's car. Oh. Well, she'll be back, Simon. I'm quite sure she'll be back. Five dollars, Simon. Oh, dear, this has been quite a visit, Margie, Margie. Oh, Pat, Pat, darling. Margie, look out. Get out of the road. Why, that's Wayne in that car. Wayne and Eleanor. Oh, Pat, that's wonderful. He's got his arm around her. Well, what am I waiting for? Hey, that's no place to kiss a girl in the middle of the road. Or is it, Eleanor? I think it's a wonderful place, darling. Oh, you do? So is coming home wonderful, Eleanor. Sometimes you have to come home to find out a lot of things. It's a grand night for singing. The stars are bright above. The earth is a glow, and to add to the show, I think I am falling.
stars will return for their curtain calls in just a moment. Those boxes look as if you'd been shopping, Sally. Yes, for a glamour girl. See? Hmm, rather small sizes. Oh, she's just one year old, but already she's dressing up for a man. At her age? Well, you see, the man is her father, just released from the service. He's never seen her before, and naturally, her mother says she must look her best. In pretty colors, I can see. Yes, nowadays, the younger set goes in for pastels. Delicate blues and pinks, yellow, too. Pastels are becoming to their complexions. And luxable, too, I suppose. Oh, yes, Mr. Kennedy. Wise mothers use Lux Flakes for just about everything of babies. It's not only to keep the colors lovely longer. There's another important reason. Lux is kind to a mother's hands. Of course. But just as important, it's kind to a baby's sensitive skin. You see, baby things washed with a soap containing harmful alkali might chase the baby. Lux hasn't a bit of harmful alkali. It's safe and gentle. Well, I'm sure your young lady will make a hit, Sally. Lux girls always do. And I'd like to suggest to mothers that they use Lux flakes carefully because they contain vital materials which shouldn't be wasted. A little Lux goes a long way. Here's Mr. Keeley at the microphone. Tonight's play was a brilliant ending to a brilliant year in the Lux Radio Theater. And all our thanks for a happy summer send-off go to Dick Haynes, Jean Crane, and Vivian Blaine, who returned to the footlights for the season's final curtain call. You mean, Mr. Keeley, that after our performance tonight, you feel you have to close the theater? <laughs> no, nothing like that, Dick. But our stars and cast and all our staff are looking forward to a well-earned rest. Eight weeks to get a suntan. Well, if it were five weeks, they could get a suntan at reduced rates. How's that, Vivian? Five and ten. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think we'll leave that there. Jean, I enjoyed seeing you in 20th Century Fox's Jerome Kern musical, Centennial Summer. You looked as if you enjoyed making it. Oh, I did, Mr. Keeley. But it was tiring work, especially in Technicolor. Well, uh, what's Technicolor got to do with it? You get tired in three colors. <laughs> Dick, I understand that in your current box picture, Do You Love Me, you're a singer for a change. Change is right. Hush money. <laughs> what are you doing this summer, Vivian? Well, starting tomorrow, I'm making a personal appearance tour from coast to coast with three weeks in New York. But how about your own plans, Mr. Keeley? Well, I'm on my way to Victoria, British Columbia, on a motor trip through Canada. I hear you have lots of Lux Radio Theater fans in Canada. Yes, and I hope to have the chance to meet some of them. When do you have your next performance here on Lux, sir? We'll be back on the air August 26th, the Monday before Labor Day. But, of course, many of us will be back in Hollywood long before that, lining up the best plays and the best stars we can find for fall production. We're looking forward, frankly, to one of the most exciting seasons of our 12 years on the air. And a lot of the credit will go, of course to the loyal support of the millions in our audience. Their friendly letters and suggestions will continue to be our guide in the forthcoming season. Well, we'll all be looking forward to August 26th, sir. Best of wishes, thanks again, and good night. Good night. Good we'll night. We'll see you all next season. <laughs> our sponsor, the makers of Lux Lake. Join me in inviting you to be with us again on Monday, August 26th, when the Lux Radio Theater starts another season of the best plays and screen songs. This is William Keeley, saying good night to you from Hollywood.